Um, so our next speaker is Antonia Almeida. A big round of applause. So I can start with a little bit of bad news. So I don't have, uh, we don't have internet, internet here, so I cannot do that. Because right now what happens is that uh, there's a Wi-Fi board, so this is uh, Olu de Vicino. And there's a Wi-Fi board, but uh, the Wi-Fi is not working. This is a very old, so I don't know if you know this, this uh, sport art computer. Do you know this, this thing over the city? So, it's manufactured by a Bulgarian company. It's called Big Open Hardware. This is a pretty old version. It's around two years old. Um, the question is if you, I don't, the, the thing that I'm using on it, which is the, the audio drivers, don't be working with the Linux Mainos. So you have to use this Linux Sun Empire project. And the idea is that the, 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 this kernel is way behind the mainline kernel in terms of uh, features. And so what happens is that um, you have to use this very old kernel. And I could not get, I, I didn't try even to install a new version, so it's really tricky. And, and so I could not make the Wi-Fi as an old order of Wi-Fi to work. So I have to use internet. But unfortunately, we don't have internet here, so I cannot do the demo. Um, but so, uh, so my name is Antonio Almeida. I'm now working as a developer vendor for this company, Relayer. So my background is I came from web development, mostly backend development. And I've been working on this for a little more than a month. And for me, it's interesting when you are a web developer because what you see here in the internet of things is the <coughs> extension of the things already sort of coming up in web development. So we know that now the systems are becoming more and more complex. We have distributed systems becoming uh, everywhere, present everywhere. We are completely uh, all around. And you see that the Internet of Things pushes that even further. Because now what you have is that not only do you have something that runs from the user and from the user to the cloud, or something that runs on the cloud uses the distributed systems, but when you have Internet of Things, you have multiple devices. Already, on the other hand, you also have distributed systems. So the things becomes more complex. And for me as a developer, as a the web developer, this is really interesting. So on the other hand, I'm also um, an audio geek. So in the fact, the reason why I bought this computer was to make a streaming server for my wife, uh, for my stereo. And um, the reason I didn't use a Pi is because the Pi at the time was only a 1A. And the USB implementation was kind of crappy. And since I wanted to interface a DAC uh, with the USB, I wanted something that was good and not a bad uh, USB implementation. So what I'm going to show you here is what you can do with just an ID you have on your head. And now you quickly you can prototype it. And you can uh, really um, sidestep all the very complex things here right now. So what well, I'm interested here is measuring noise. Okay, so I know if you work on open spaces, but this like, noise is a real issue, especially if you're a developer, because if you have other people that do other things which is not developing, you have always have to have your headphones on. And this is not good for communication, right? If you're talking with people, you're supposed to be communicating with other people, but there's too much noise if you cannot focus. So noise sensing, I think, is a very important thing. So um, so I think the IoT is really a noise number. It's, it's not the proper term, because it's not things. What you connect in really is APIs, OK? You have an API on the devices, you have an API from the bridging devices that connect to the cloud, and then from the cloud, we have even more devices, uh, more APIs. So, and I think also that um, there's been a focus on hardware and a focus also on the sensor part. And the sensors are interesting, but what do they produce? They produce data, okay? And I think the big value is in data. And all the companies right now uh, that are coming to this IoT thing, what they see is how can they use this data and save money or make more money using this data. And this is where I think free software is, plays a big role because we already built the software. We just need to show these people that the software is here. We, could, we just need to know how to work with it and have ideas how to play with it. And that's what I'm doing here with this demo, which unfortunately I cannot, I cannot show it. I even had a sound of an office, um, but there's no internet, so that's what we have. So I think that's also that's been overhyped, this thing on the Internet of Things. And people thought Internet of Things that was about your putting your fridge to twin. I don't think it's interesting if your fridge twins. Um, I don't care what you have in your fridge. So it's a, I think this is the Internet of it's junk. It's not the Internet of Things. Um, so, um, so we as a company, we are interested in connecting 
all those things and we work with these things. So, like you see, this VS8 is Bosch series. With this Bosch, what they want, they have very old washing machines and they want to know what's happening with the machines. You know, because you buy a washing machine, if it's a good quality, you're not going to buy a new one next year. So, what they want to do is like retrofit something in this machine and then get data out of it. And with this data, they can say, say okay, your machine has a problem on the pump, you need to replace it. And then maybe they can provide to the client a proposal and say, why, instead of you replacing the pump, we can propose you a new one just for a little bit more. So it's interesting for the client and for the company. So when we started, to, so this, this company, Relay, when started, was basically a crowdfunded project, and they developed this thing, which is which is a, kick, a starter kit. Anyone play with this? Wonderful. Here? No. So it's a starter kit for the Internet of Things. So it has a master module, it has Wi-Fi, and then it has a bunch of sensors that connect with uh, via Bluetooth, okay? So it have, you have an onboarding app that you run on your phone, and then you can have this thing. It has temperature, humidity, uh, noise level, but the noise level is not very good, just gives you an idea. Um, it has luminosity, um, yeah, luminosity, and yeah, this is, this is basically the problem. And so they, they have all have batteries, so you can, cut all these modules and put them wherever you want and they all communicate with the master module. So, so this is, this is uh, the dashboard when you, we, we have this solution and you can onboard a device and then you can manage your devices on this dashboard. So um, you use a lot of protocols, okay, in the Internet of Things, like the MQTT, <coughs> this morning we talked about co-app, uh, HTTP, web sockets, etc. okay? And I was here in the first uh, talk, and Peter said that MQTT is really not uh, open because you cannot extend the protocol. It's true, it was initially a thing that uh, IBM invented, and they saw, wow, this Internet of Things is coming up. Let's see if we can squeeze something in and ride the wave, right? Ride the tiger. Uh, so they open sourced the project, and now it's supposed to be an official standard, right? Completely open official standard. It's true, it's a very limited protocol. You only have pops up, you cannot have uh, request response. So uh, you have to do kind of X on it, and what you do is since you cannot extend it, you modify the payload, and you put the payload, and you can send commands, but then you don't have a response. Uh, so it's, 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 it's an interesting protocol because it's very lightweight. Um, I think even if you work for this web, as a web developer, when I look at it, I see it's interesting for this microservice thing, now that it's all the rage. Sometimes people use very complicated solutions for Q, for asynchronousity, and they could use MQTT instead, which is much simpler, it's already there. Just they did, they're not aware of it, because you just see HTTP and uh, web sockets and you just look at it, and you don't know these protocols. So, um, the modern protocols are open and fully standardized, and we have APIs built on them. Um, and I think the value comes from this data, like the washing machine, what you want to know, it's you as a client, as a user, as the owner of the machine, you want to know what's going on with the machine. And the company that manufactures the machine want to know also because they want to manufacture better machines and maybe try to sell a new one when they see that that one is starting to have problems. So, um, so I think also that IoT, the focus, what I have seen is mostly on hardware, okay? And they exclude everything else. But I think the most interesting thing is, I mean, the hardware is interesting for sure, and now it's really easy to get, and it's becoming a commodity. But what's really interesting is what you can do when you use hardware and use free software. So all the APIs you can build uh, that are there, that you can build and use to utilize that hardware and make all this chain from end to end, where you have the devices on one hand, and you have the data that you get to these devices, and then you can process this data and do many things with it. So, um, so hardware is just a tool. I'm using this, some people prefer to use the Pi, you can use other things, you can use microcontrollers if you want. Um, so, um, so we we build we will build a noise sensing device that uses uh, MKGT published to the cloud. Okay, this the cloud. It's it's closed cloud, like it is uh, Amazon cloud. But in fact, it's built on free software. So there was a person here talking about Postgres. Uh, this this pushes to a database, and the database it pushes is Cassandra, which is a completely open project, a free software project. Um, it's it's I think I didn't want to raise the issue when that discussion was because I think that's. Uh, who knows here about the cap theorem? Okay, so this gentleman was talking about uh, uh, Postgres. I didn't want to raise the issue about what happens when we have network partitions. How do they handle this thing? Because this is between the data. So uh, 
the lower look that's Leisman and Cassandra, what sort of is, was developed from the start thinking about this issue of every network partitions and distributed systems. So everything is, in fact, over the cloud is closed, everything is built on open source. It's uh, Cassandra for the database, for the web store, it's Mosca for the MQTT, which is an LGS implementation of an MQTT broker, and um, the HTTP API is built on Scala. So everything, although I'm pushing to this, to this cloud, everything is, you can build your own if you want, okay? Um, so, so I think noise is very important, it's a health issue, and also I think that more and more silence is becoming a rare thing. So we have pipe music everywhere, uh, we have the noise in the cities, so it's really important for you to assess it's a health issue, I think it's a health issue, um, and it's also a question of you um, being, being more productive and being happier in your work. If you have a noise environment, um, the noisy environment means you're not happy. You, you always feel stressed and you don't want to be here and you wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to go there and have to be there and fed up being to put up with all this noise, all these people chatting and you start hating your, your uh, co-workers because they shout or they, they laugh very loud all the time. So I think this is really a very important issue. Uh, so this this is how um, <laughs> I do. So I think in the 18th century they had much less noise than we have now. Um, so, this is the only we've seen of A13, unfortunately, I cannot do the demo. So, um, this is basically an ARM computer, it uses an ARM Cortex, uh, Cortex A8, um, uh, ARM, ARM core, uh, that's what it uses to And then it has, I think the big thing, and this is what uh, we're taking advantage of here, it has an audio codec, which means it's an audio input, it output, it has a microphone input. And you can run Linux on it. And you run Linux on it, you just use ALSA, and with ALSA, which is a free software project, you can capture you can capture sound. You put a microphone and you capture sound. And this is the whole idea of this of this of this prototyping. It's like using only what you really have and 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 try to do something which is really useful, like noise sensing, with just standard components. Because they are of course professional things for measuring noise, but they are really, really expensive. So, um, so the demo, unfortunately, I had to skip it. So, um, so there are, I can show it here on the terminal. I, I can show the code running on the terminal here, but it's not as interesting as there, and I'll do that. So, um, this, what, what you're going to see here is, is just a start. Of course, it just built with a bunch of soft scripts, it just used the Mosquito clients, okay, the bug soft clients, from Mosquito, which is a, a represent implementation for MQTT as a broker and as clients. Um, and, but you can go further, just with this thing, you have already something which is really useful. Um, and you can go further, and if you want to have, so the microphone that I have here for the demo, it's like an omnidirectional microphone, so it can capture sound from a lot of, from all directions, but you could have like directional microphones and have a microphone array, and you can have um, a multiplexer that goes to those microphones, and you can do sampling on the room or in the big room, you can do a sampling and know exactly what's going on in each location and not have um, cross-talking or interference between the, the, the noise that comes from one location to the other. So, let's see if I do the demo here.
Okay, so, um, does everyone see this or do you want the, the font to be bigger? Is everything okay? Bigger? bigger? I'm not sure it works on this terminal. Better? Okay. So what I have here is just two scripts. The project is on GitHub. I'll show you this. The project is on GitHub. Uh, what I have is two scripts. It's just one script that publishes um, to the Relay Cloud, and I'll show you here this, this working. And you have a script that just subscribes to this topic. So MQTT. <coughs> Everyone here is familiar with FTTT, with top MTTT topics and all that. <coughs> so it works with topics. You publish according to a topic, and this topic can define a hierarchy of topics, like you have your house, and you have your temperature in your house, the humidity in your house. So you can say slash house or slash home, and then you can say slash home temperature, slash home humidity, uh, slash home luminosity, things like this. Um, here I'm just using a very simple just one topic without any hierarchy. In fact, there's kind of a hierarchy, but it's inside, it's in the payload. And you see this, this is thing that called path, all right? But they're called path, and it's the path. Uh, it's called path just because we didn't find a, we had to find a name that was not uh, prone to confusion when you have different devices. It's what's when you develop a project for a fridge. Um, but it's not directly related to this MQTT topic path. And um, so this published this topic. So MQTT can have like semantic, and this means like, this is, this is the MQTT topic, so this is the API version V1, and this is the topic. As you see, it's just a UUID, so it's a 128 byte uh, uh, unique number, okay? Um, and what happens is this, uh, this thing here doesn't have any meaning. It's just a way for you to associate a physical or a logical device with, uh, yeah, with the topic, nothing more. So, I'm going to do it here, and you will see this. So how does this work? So this uses socks. Um, this uses socks. So socks. Everyone here knows socks. Like it's a, it's a kind of a Swiss <coughs> tool for uh, for working with sound. You can do a lot of things with it. So it uses socks. It does a sample uh, of a sound, a what's a second long sample. Um, I'm just interested interested in here in things that affect humans, and this means that I'm the sampling frequency is up just 22 kilohertz, okay? I'm not using like the CV specification uh, because I don't, it's not about iFi, it's about, I'm interested to know what sound affects humans and we know that uh, about, it's something around the three kilohertz, so I'm cutting this on the 10 kilohertz. So, uh, this is what I did, so we published this, um, we published this, it's sent, and then we have here the, the data. So, there's three things that are sent on this, uh, on this, um, on this uh, payload. So, is the path, which is the RMS value, and this is a relative value, okay? This is, uh, this is so this is represented as a 32-bit uh, inside, okay? So, this is, this is a relative value of the amplitude, um, and uh, so the meaning is a number, this is to do with the specification in terms of uh, the way you have a I'll show you this. And then, because this is RMS value, this is a mean value, and this is a rough estimate of the frequency, okay? Of the frequency that uh, the microphone, in uh, this case, is a microphone from the platform. Okay, now I could see here, if I want, I could have here this description. Okay, see here. So 
this is the thing I'm using here for this for for the demo that unfortunately I won't I won't be I won't be able to do. Um, I can do this demo if you find an Ethernet cable. I can show this working for you. Um, so this is the, the device I'm using. Um, so this is a small ARM computer. Um, so what I've shown here, this was this was done with a very crappy microphone. I can show you. This is just from uh, some cheap headphones. Uh, this is not even a high quality microphone, but this is enough for you to get an idea. Okay. But if you want to be really serious, uh, you can use like a professional microphone. I like, have this thing here. It costs around like eighty dollars. Uh, it's an American thing. This is a professional microphone. This is calibrated, which means that the values that you have are relative. Then you can, when you calibrate it, then you can have a meaning in terms of BB. SPL okay, and sound pressure. Um, so other things, yes. So this, the code is here. It's on GitHub. It's just a bunch of shell scripts. Um, yeah, this is this is what we have here. So this is the this is the publish. This is what it is. Very simple. Just. Just uses Mosquito Publish, uses JQ, it's like a JSON parser on the command line, just to show it the payload nicer. Um, yeah, and it has a bunch, of just very simple thing. And the subscribe is even simpler. So um, this is just an idea, which I cannot do the demo. Um, what, what you can do with just free software, using the APIs this free software provides, and uh, I mean, the sky is the limit. This is just an idea about sound sensing, and it's, a, it's a really important for problem and most solutions out there are really too complex I think because they are focused towards hardware use like analog to digital converters um, but you already have an analog to digital converter if your uh, device has an audio codec on it so you can use that and start playing with it you can even use if you want to do acoustic experiments you can use this whole thing uh, to do acoustic experiments if you want so um, unfortunately you can do the demo so that's it um, any questions? Yes. Yeah, I was thinking your comment about the standard referee, you know, the information for your referee to your tweet, to the Twitter. I mean, I agree this is not a very good uh, use case, but I think this is a proof of the concept that you can, you know, connect your the thing, you know, the uh, constrained device to web services. But unfortunately, I mean, these days, because the reason we chose like a social media like a, a Twitter or Facebook, because they actually uh, provide you interface to, you know, to uh, do your yes. apps. I mean, uh, ideal situation, like for one example, it's like uh, if I send my heart rate, uh, heart rate uh, information to the, my Kairos, Kairos, uh, my health Kairos uh, web server. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you know, you, at this moment, it's very hard to have such a server support. Yes. So. Yes. Um, yes. This is this is a good point. I, I think that the reason why they use social media because I think they use it just as a marketing device because it's like it, it gets marketing, it gets it gets interest, it gets clicks. I think it was just this. I frankly I don't see any interest in them of uh, in sending tweets, to send your Twitch content to Twitter. Uh, on the other hand, if you can tell that the Twitch has a problem. I think this is really useful. It's really useful for you as a, the owner of the fridge, and it's really only, uh, useful for you as the manufacturer of the fridge. I, I just think it was just a marketing thing, and it got a lot of bad press for IoT because there are a lot of security issues with it. That, that's right. I mean, I'm sorry, I think we have to cut this. Now okay.